Our lecture today is about the blood pressure instrumentation. We will, this lecture will be separated into three parts. The first part is a general background. The second part will be uh, for invasive blood pressure instrumentation. And the third part will be for the non-invasive blood pressure instrumentation. So the first part now we will cover, a, we will have a general background. In the general background, we will have an introduction, uh, the commercial application of a blood pressure reading, uh, non-invasive blood pressure and invasive blood pressure readings, uh, cardiovascular system, and finally we will talk about the control of uh, the uh, cardiovascular system uh, through blood pressure regulation part. Introduction. So, uh, what is a blood pressure? An arterial blood pressure is a force exerted by the blood on the wall of a blood vessel as the heart pumps. Uh, during the contraction of the heart, we call the maximum blood pressure. We defined it as a systolic uh, blood pressure, whereas the minimum blood pressure, which is during the relaxation of the heart, we call it uh, diastolic blood pressure. Uh, blood pressure uh, is universally measured in a millimeter mercury, uh, although the SI unit is Pascal, because for blood pressure, the Pascal is considered too small. And the kilopascal is too large because the result is the using either pascal or kilopascal will result in a poor resolution for the recording of blood pressure. Whereas the use of millimeter mercury will be considered the best choice to have a better resolution. Uh, in, this, in the chart below, we see the different types of uh, pressure measurement units and its relation to millimeter mercury. Blood pressure instrumentation classification. Uh, the blood pressure instrumentation can be classified in a different time, ways or manners. The first way which will be adopted in this lecture is based on the measurement. The measurement can be taken either invasively or non-invasively. Uh, also, uh, the blood pressure instrumentation can be classified based on the reading, if it's a single read or a continuous reading of the blood pressure. Also, in its application in the uh, medical field, for example, it can be a standalone uh, blood pressure device or it can be a part of, an, uh, of a device with many other parameters. An example, for example, an, as, as an example, is the vital sign. Where we have, in addition to the non-invasive blood pressure reading, we have the temperature and the pulse oximeter readings. Uh, also, another device is the patient monitor, where we have, in addition to uh, the reading of blood pressure invasively and non-invasively, we have the electrocardiogram, we have the pulse oximeter reading, we have the temperature reading, uh, we have the CO2 readings, and many, many other parameters. Also, the... Uh, blood pressure uh, can be uh, used uh, in a halter system, uh, which is a device used to the recording of the blood pressure non-invasively for a long period, for example, one day or even more. So as we said before in the, in the previous slide, uh, we will adopt the classification based on the measurement if it's invasive or non-invasive in this lecture. So now in this slide, we'll make a small comparison to understand the difference between an invasive blood pressure and non-invasive one. So the invasive blood pressure is considered as, as a direct method of the measurement of the blood pressure, which means what, which will give us a higher accuracy and a continuous reading of the blood pressure. Whereas the non-invasive blood pressure is considered as, a, as an indirect method of reading or measurement of the blood pressure, uh, and thus it's, it has a lower accuracy. It can be a single reading or a continuous reading. Uh, single reading usually like in the case of the isometric method, 
which is used uh, uh, in vital signs and patient monitors. Also, it can be a continuous reading of the blood pressure, uh, such as in the SNAP uh, technology, which is the acronym for uh, continuous non-invasive arterial, uh, arterial pressure. Uh, well, such device usually is used as a standalone device. However, the invasive uh, blood pressure reading uh, has uh, many drawbacks. Uh, one of them being uh, one of them uh, having a higher uh, a high level uh, a high infection risk uh, and also a high possibility of having an electrical shock whereas the non invasive blood pressure is considered to be more safe concerning the infection risk and the electrical shock possibility in the second part, as we said before, we will cover the invasive blood instrumentation, whereas in the third part, we'll cover the non-invasive blood pressure instrumentation. Some commercial application for the blood pressure, uh, blood pressure measurement. Uh, we can, first, we will start with the non-invasive blood pressure readings, uh, which uh, can be, as we said, a freestanding monitor or it can be an integrated with other parameters in a one device. Uh, major uh, manufacturers or famous manufacturers are the GE Medical, Philips, Welsh Allen, Space Labs, and other manufacturers. As we said before, a vital sign monitor <coughs> is a medical device which has the three parameters. The first parameter is uh, the non-invasive blood pressure. The second parameter is a pulse oximeter readings. And the final one is the temperature reading. Uh, as we can see uh, in this slide, a famous manufacturer GE Healthcare, uh, which has two type, uh, has many types of vital signs, but one or two of them is the Kerscape VC150, and the another second one is Dynamap V100. Another manufacturer of the vital sign is a Welsh Allen. Uh, as we see in this picture, we have also two types for the Welsh Allen, which has also many types. Uh, the first one here is a handheld one, where this one it can be used uh, in a mobile stand. Another manufacturer, a famous manufacturer of the vital sign, uh, vital sign monitors is uh, Philips uh, Healthcare. As we can see, uh, there's two type or uh, there's two uh, models of uh, vital signs. The first one is called VSI and the second one VS4. As we can see, the VS4 uh, has a more a uh, larger screen by comparison to the VSI. Also, we see in this uh, slide the mobile stand where we put the vital stand to be used as a mobile uh, vital sign monitor. Uh, in this slide, uh, we, sh we can see uh, the non-invasive blood pressure module. Uh, the non-invasive blood pressure module is uh, made of uh, three major parts. The first part is a pump, we call it the rolling pump, two solenoid valves and two pressure sensors. Uh, this according to the IAC requirement, we should have two pressure sensors. In the case of we want to have a non-invasive blood pressure module, uh, either in a vital sign or a patient monitor. Uh, this uh, non-invasive blood pressure module uh, is made by Philips for uh, patient monitors known as M300 series. As we can see, we see uh, as we can see uh, two solenoid valves and uh, two pressure sensors, as well as the rolling pump. Also in this slide, we see another non-invasive blood module, which is manufactured by GE Healthcare. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, used in the DASH series, which is, uh, we have DASH 3000, 4000, and 5000. In this hard, uh, in this hard wall, also we have a rolling pump, two, two solenoid valves, a pressure sensor here, and another pressure sensor, which is mounted in the main control board. Uh, also, uh, another part, which is a filter, an L filter, is used here. Uh, all, uh, in this slide, we see the non-invasive blood pressure accessories. We can, uh, there, in this uh, part, we see the different type of connectors manufactured by different type uh, uh, 
by different type of manufacturers so each manufacturer has its own type of connector and uh, this uh, diagram we see uh, the uh, non-invasive blood pressure cuffs which is manufactured by Philips this type of uh, blood pressure is uh, disposable well, as we can see we have different sizes number five four three two and one uh, below we see also a non-invasive blood uh, blood pressure cuffs which is made by uh, GE healthcare uh, but in this uh, we can see two type of uh, non-invasive blood pressure cuffs we see a disposable and a reusable type of non-invasive blood pressure cuffs now we will see some uh, another application for the blood pressure management where it uh, measured invasively and non-invasively which is in the case of the patient monitors a patient monitors is uh, a medical device which has many parameters one of them is the electrocardiogram, another one is a pulse oximeter, uh, another is uh, the temperature, and of course the invasive blood pressure and non-invasive blood pressure. Major manufacturers are Philips, GE, Welsh, Annan, and many others. In this photo, we see a patient monitor which is manufactured by Philips. It's called the MX8000. As we can see, it's a wall mounted here. This one is mounted here, is a wall mounted bes uh, be beside the patient, uh, the patient uh, bed. Uh, in this slide, we see another patient monitor which also manufactured by Philips. This one is a portable one. It's called Access C. As we can see in this uh, slide, uh, in this uh, photo, as we said before, the patient monitor has many parameters. As we can see, there are many connectors. One for the temperature, another one for the invasive blood pressure rating, another one for CO2, for pulse oximeter, for the SCG or electrocardiogram and the non-invasive blood pressure. So we have the non-invasive blood pressure and the invasive blood pressure with many other parameters. Now we will start talk about the cardiovascular system and then finally we will talk after that uh, about the blood pressure regulation and its importance for our body. So cardiovascular system as we can see, uh, we have the heart with two circulation or two, circuit, uh, two circuits. The first one is a pulmonary, the second one is uh, called systemic. This one usually with the lungs and the, the, second, uh, the second one is with the uh, body, with the uh, other organs. Uh, also can be separated on a left side and a right side. In the right side, we have a low oxygen concentration and high CO2, whereas in the left side, we see a, low, uh, a high oxygen concentration and low CO2 concentration, which opposite to the right side. Also in this diagram, we see the, uh, the, uh, a, more, uh, a, more, uh, a better view for the cardiovascular system uh, or cardiovascular circulation with um, uh, many organs. In this slide, we see the blood vessel types, the different types of blood vessel, the large ones, the small, the intermediate or medium one, medium sized, and the small one, as well as the capillary. In the right uh, side, uh, we see, uh, in the left side, sorry, we see the veins, and on the right side, we see the arteries. Here is a magnified picture uh, for uh, three blood vessels, the artery, vein, and capillary, which show uh, which uh, shows the different uh, layers for each one of the uh, each one of them. In this one, uh, we can see uh, blood vessel dimensions, which is uh, the main diameter and the mean uh, wall thickness for the uh, different types of the blood vessels: the artery, uh, arteriole, capillary, venule, and vein. So the main diameter for the artery is 4 mm, the one for arteriole is around 30 micrometers, whereas the capillary is 8 micrometer, uh, the venule is 20 micrometers, and the vein is 5. Also we can see the mean wall thickness for the same blood vessels, as well as we can see the different layers of these, uh, of these vessels, blood vessels. So as we said before, we have uh, the blood pressure 
and during the contraction of her heart, we call the maximum pressure during the contraction of the heart, we call systolic pressure, whereas the, uh, the minimum pressure during the relaxation of, her, of the heart, we call it diastolic. Also, we have the mean, the one which is used in the control of the cardiovascular system. Also, we see in this slide uh, the blood pressures in both circulation, the systemic and the pulmonary. Uh, the first uh, thing we can notice here uh, is the high pressure in the systemic by comparison to the low pressure in the pulmonary circulation. Also, we can see the oxygenated part, the oxygenated uh, blood and the deoxygenated blood in both of them. Uh, here we see a typical waveform for the mean arterial pressure. Uh, this mean arterial pressure can be either calculated approximately or accurately. An approximation way we can use one of two methods. For uh, in, in this method, we add the third of the systolic pressure with the two third for diastolic pressure in order to have the mean arterial pressure. In the accurate one, we make an integration for the area under the curve in one beat, in one heartbeat. Now we will talk about the blood pressure regulation and why it's important for our body to have a blood pressure regulation. We'll start with the perfusion. Uh, the perfusion has been covered in a previous lecture, which is the pulse oximeter, but I will talk uh, shortly about this. Uh, the perfusion, as we said before, is essential to have a healthy tissues. Uh, it uh, supplies this, uh, the tissues with oxygen and nutrients and remove the metabolic weight, uh, metabolic waste, sorry, and the uh, CO2 from the tissues. Uh, the uh, mean arterial pressure is play an essential role in the control of this blood perfusion, as we said before uh, in the previous lecture. Thus, in order uh, to con uh, consequently a control of the hydrostatic pressure of the blood, which is the mean arterial pressure, is a must in order to have a good perfusion, uh, which means a healthy tissue. So what is the, the mean arterial pressure? Is the average pressure in the aorta during the one cardiac cycle. It can be calculated according to this formula, which uh, the, the mean arterial pressure equals the cardiac output multiplied by the total peripheral resistance. As we know, the cardiac output is the heart rate multiplied by the stroke volume. The heart rate, uh, the, the stroke volume is the volume per one beat. S thus, in order to control the mean arterial pressure and consequently to have a good perfusion, we need to control the heart rate, the stroke volume, and the total peripheral resistance. The body regulates this map or uh, controls this map through a short-term regulation mechanism and a long-term uh, regulation mechanism. In this slide, we see that the short term is uh, can be separated into a rapid and intermediate response. Uh, in order, uh, the rapid system is controlled by the neurons, which means by neurons, and the intermediate short, uh, the intermediate response for the short term is called by the hormonal. Uh, as for the long term, it's controlled by the renal body fluid control system through the kidneys. So, in order to control the blood pressure, the, the mean arterial blood pressure, as we can see. In the neural, we have what we call the baroreceptors, which are a pressure sensors, uh, a strain gauge. It's similar to, uh, to work to the strain gauge, which measures uh, the diameter, the change in the diameter of the aorta, as well as the change in the uh, diameter of carotid in the what we call the high pressure. Uh, 
and we have also the uh, measurement of the string uh, measurement of the diameter of the pulmonary artery in the, what we call in a low pressure as we said before uh, we can uh, classify the cardiovascular system into two circulation uh, or two circuits the pulmonary and the systematic the pulmonary as we said it's a low pressure and the uh, systematic is a high pressure in the high pressure we have two baroreceptors uh, which is a strain gauge well, uh, all of them are strain gauge uh, one uh, is in the aortic arc another one is in the carotid arteries whereas in uh, the lower pressure is measured in the pulmonary circulation okay so we have strain gauges as well, we have, in addition to the baroreceptor, we have the chemoreceptors, which are also a special type of neurons. Uh, it measures the pH O2 and CO2. So we have different type of sensors, a pH sensor, an oxygen sensor, and CO2 sensor, which also is used in the control of the uh, and the control and regulation of our blood pressure uh, as we see in the long term we have also we have the hormonal part of course uh, which is an intermediate short term also we have the long term which also control we have another type of sensors chemical sensors which measure the uh, an a plus concentration in our blood as well in h2o so to summarize to order in order to control our uh, to control uh, the blood pressure, uh, we have many sensor uh, sensor feedbacks. Uh, we have strain gauge uh, strain gauges existed in a high pressure, which is a systematic uh, systemic circuit, and in the lower pressure strain gauges in the lower pressure, which is the pulmonary. We have a chemical sensors which is pH O2 and CO2, and uh, we have also uh, uh, so sodium sensor which is used in the long term the question why we need the, the ph o2 and co2 as we said before the importance of the mean arterial pressure is a uh, control of the perfusion in, uh, if we have a good uh, control for the mean arterial pressures this means we have a good perfusion and thus we have a, a healthy tissue uh, as we said in the perfusion there's an exchange of uh, there's a supply of oxygen and nutrients and the removal uh, of uh, co2 and metabolic waste also as we said before uh, if we uh, the ph co2 and o2 are related because co2 with the water make an acidic fluid uh, the, uh, which is reflected in the ph okay so a good control uh, a good reading of this and uh, consequently the control of the cardiovascular system will enable us to have a good perfusion so this is the summary for the regulation this another diagram which shows as we said for a short term and a long term as we said this is the uh, baroreceptors which uh, we have in high and low pressure they, these are strain gauges which measure the change in the diameter in aortic uh, arc in uh, carotid arteries uh, in pulmonary arteries and we have chemo receptor uh, chemo receptors which are uh, uh, it's a chemical sensor uh, which measures the ph oxygen and so2 also we have here a sodium uh, sensors and also the control of uh, water conservation of sodium and then so we have an a plus uh, sensor and h2o water uh, sensor this is just uh, a repetition what we uh, which uh, i have said before the barrel reflex which is in the uh, part of the rapid uh, short term rapid response in the short term uh, control or regulation we have high pressure low pressure this one pulmonary arteried carotid all of this are no more than a strain gauges which measure the variation and the diameters of these different type of arteries this also a uh, this are the chemoreceptors which we have said before we have uh, the ph sensor we have a CO2 sensor and we have O2 sensors all these sensors are a special type of a neurons to stress in this point so the uh, baroreceptors and chemoreceptors are a special type of a neurons are a sensors uh, a special type of an, uh, neurons which measure 
O2, CO2, pH, as well as, as we said, the pressure, baroreceptors. In this uh, diagram, we see the different pressure blood categories, uh, normal, elevated, and high, and the hypertensive crisis. Here, uh, an example, in case we have uh, a high blood pressure, uh, what the complications will happen? We have uh, a complication which uh, in the brain, in the blood, in the heart, in the kidneys, as well as the retina of the eye.